expired. Uh, I, I went way over. I'm sorry, Madam Chair. I appreciate your indulgence. I'm going to call on Senator Reid, but I also want to announce that a vote has started on the Senate floor. Um, Senator Capito has who chairs the subcommittee with jurisdiction over this issue, uh, will take over as the chair. Will I go vote? But we will be trying to keep the hearing going in the meantime. Thank you, Senator. Next up. Thank you. Should, I, should I start? Well, thank you, Chair Collins, and thank you, Ranking Member Murray, for convening this very important hearing, and also thank you for the witness for your extraordinarily effective and timely uh, testimony. Yeah, uh, let's agree from the beginning, everybody loves biomedical research, but there's some people that don't want to fund it adequately, and they're in the administration. And that's why we're here today, frankly. I want to particularly thank uh, Emily for coming and testifying. It must be difficult to talk about that. And let me also point on the obvious. Charlie's the best behaved person in this room, including all of us, so. Charlie, thank you. Dr. Sleckman, uh, the Trump administration is slashing funds for research, uh, and now they've raised up this issue of indirect costs. Oh, they're not central, we can be dismissed with. Uh, but the terminology really doesn't capture what these costs are for. Uh, they help keep patients safe while they're in treatment. Uh, they help to provide the sanity, uh, sanitary situation in a hospital research. Uh, they also are used in many cases to subsidize young professionals who eventually will become the real researchers several years from now. Uh, so. Can you talk about how this will impact the University of Alabama, your facilities, if it's cut to 15 percent? Yes, Senator, thank you. Uh, I can uh, certainly comment on that. Uh, as was uh, discussed earlier, these uh, costs, which we call indirect costs, are used to support all of the infrastructure required to do the research. So to kind of put it simply, uh, if I was making automobiles, and I considered how much it costs for parts and labor on the assembly line, those would be direct costs to make the automobile. The cost for the accountants, the salespeople, the depreciation of equipment, buildings, the security guard, those would be the indirect costs for making the automobile. So biomedical research, like any industry, has direct costs that go directly into the work product, which is the science, and indirect costs into things that support that science. A concrete example of a reduction of indirect costs for us was brought up earlier. If the indirect cost drops, we will no longer be able to support the level of staff needed to safely open and run clinical trials. So when we get money for a clinical trial, that money goes directly to paying the costs of administering the new drug and taking care of the patient. It does not cover any of the costs of the oversight groups like the Institutional Review Board, uh, the legal group that are required to open those trials, monitor them, and make sure that they're being run safely. Thank you very much. And Dr. Parikh, uh, was mentioned was made of the Gates Foundation grants, all the foundation grants. Don't they essentially sort of uh, play, uh, utilize this indirect costs that we put up so that they're contribution can be much less in terms of indirect cost? Uh, they certainly pool together, yeah. but in addition, they allow certain costs that we would call indirect costs for the federal government, they allow those to be considered in the direct costs, which means it's an apples to orange com oranges comparison. I, I think that's important to know. Uh, finally, uh, um, Emily, uh, thank you for being here again. Uh, I've had the great fortune of working with my colleague, Senator Capito, on the STAR Act, which is the first legislation that focused NIH uh, on pediatric cancer research, and we're very proud. We've worked together, a very capable lady, and we've got it through. So we've got NIH focus now much intensely on pediatric cancer research. And one of the reasons we do that, because we know it affects the whole family. It's not 
somebody, uh, an adult, can go to work and keep, you know, put up with it. It's the whole family. And indeed, one of the aspects of our research in the STAR Act is the fact that we have required them to do long-term studies of the effects of cancer on children, not just the child, but the family, brothers and sisters, because that's, that has to be dealt with too. Uh, and again, uh, your remarkable testimony is deeply appreciated. Charlie's great. Anything else you'd like to add? I'd just like to thank you for uh, putting forth that act. And Charlie's actually followed by two clinical trials to measure her survivorship and uh, to help other kids who are yet to come. That's great. Thank you, Madam Chair, and go Charlie.